the 2020 OLA conference and a proud and blessed small bowel intestinal transplant of prior to transplant and post-transplant. Needless to say, it's been a journey. Before being transferred to Mount Sinai, I had several surgeries due to blood clots that went from the heart to the lungs and suddenly had gotten as well to the, the intestine. As a result, they had to remove my entire small bowel. So I was finally transferred over to Mount Sinai and that's when that journey began. I had then, of course, short gut syndrome, as you know, which is the absence of the gut, the colon, small intestine. And so the first stage I had with that was with drains. Um, one drain called the D-drain and another called the G-drain. One was, both actually came from the side of my abdominal area. One was strapped to my leg and one was so large that I actually had to carry it in a bag. And so I went home with that and I also did TPN through the central line for 14 to 16 hours. Pretty much what I would say for TPN or just the whole process of short gut limitations, okay? Timing is very limited, especially living in New York City. If you want to live a normal life, commuting takes up a lot of time. So let's say approximately two hours to commute back and forth and you're on treatment intravenously at home for 14 and possibly maybe a little longer, 16 hours. So you're looking at maybe five hours max to do what you need to do in the day. So I went home in during that process and I also had gotten a call to receive a transplant, which actually wasn't the one God wanted. It did not happen. However, that time motivated me to to create something to give back to others. So time was limited and I also knew that I had to develop a certain type of mindset. I call it having a mind of Christ or you may look at it as having an athlete mind. I didn't allow my situations to, to turn me away. I didn't let it engulf me. I looked past that and I knew that life was gonna be better and I began to say, this was in my life, this is only temporary, and that I would no longer have a central line. So the next thing that I did was I developed healthy distractions in my life. So the healthy distractions, one was a support group in ministry that my amazing friends and family, the Rock Churches Worldwide, they helped develop. And so what, 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 what happened was we went into Mount Sinai Hospital and we utilized the arts. I'm a performing artist. So we utilized the arts as a tool to inspire and show people that they have the power inside to combat any diagnosis or any situation. And then we will also just share words of inspiration or encouragement to people. During that time, I also created a vlog which is still on YouTube and it shows my journey before the transplant and showing people what my day-to-day -day life looked like. Um, going back to the that support group, it was such a success that we have expanded to all of the boroughs throughout New York City. Of course, during this time and season, we had to put it on pause, but this was something that we had stirring. And it, in, it consisted of patients who perhaps they were transplant recipients, small bowel, but not just limited to them, any patient that we encountered. And it was a beautiful thing. Also, I learned it's so important to surround yourselves with like-minded people, people that genuinely give you love. Love is the cure, it's the answer, it's God, it's everything. So. It was a bit of a up and down ride, especially when you're waiting for a transplant because you can get a call and then suddenly 
it doesn't work. So that was also an experience I had as well. It was pretty much an emotional roller coaster, if you will. Of one moment you were thinking it was going to happen and then it didn't. And then there will be mishaps. A drain will fall out. It would get so old. And then, of course, as you know, being on TPN, TPN is the temporary parenteral nutrients. It gives your body the nutrients, which you it, it goes through intravenously through your central line. So as a result, there is no eating. So there's that social awkwardness of not being able to eat and constantly being gathered around people. And during the time I had short gut syndrome was during a time that also a church began in my apartment. So of course, there was a lot of breaking bread, a lot of food eating, which I didn't engage in. And so it's a socially awkward thing that you realize. And we often take for granted because it's something we don't think about to actually think to not eat, to not be able to digest food is a is is something big to grasp, okay? But needless to say, it was it was an experience and it became a challenge, a huge challenge, especially because I began to feel a phenomena of hunger. So hydration was another important thing. I had to make sure that I was constantly hydrated. Muy importante very important during that time. So those were the things prior to transplant life with short gut. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention that we often take for granted and we don't think about because, you know, as I began this with limitations, things are very limited. Obviously, there's no eating your time in the day and also bathing, cleaning, things like that, that are normal things that people do every day. Because you have a central line port, you have to make sure it's not exposed to water or bacteria. So I had to be very careful about those things. Cleaning, I, I had to ensure that I wasn't exposed to too many germs. So these were the things that happened again during that time. Now, my transplant came last year year may 19th 2019 i call it my miracle it was my miracle child my miracle that came and blessed me with this new life and of course the amazing talent of dr Iyer and dr moon at mount sinai with their extraordinary team here i am speaking to you today it now i must say is a roller coaster prior to this i mentioned it was an up and down somewhat similar but this stage is definitely a roller coaster it's very interesting because in my mind as someone who was used to always going 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 i felt ha huh, i'm just gonna jump back and do everything i did before and it's gonna be great eh, incorrect i was wrong in fact i had to be very humbled okay because you have to take it day by day in fact I was very humbled to know that after several surgeries, nearly 15 or possibly 20, your body needs to heal. So there's a lot of resting that's involved with receiving your transplant, a lot of rest, a lot of making sure that you're intaking hydration, G2 Gatorade, which is something I intake a lot for electrolyte support it's so important to make sure that's happening. So for my sanity, because I always want to go, 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 I told myself I have to rest because that's being obedient to the miracle, aka the transplant that God has blessed me with. Because if I'm not taking care of it, it can be taken away. So that was for me something to encourage self-care, self-healing, resting, during this time, I also had the opportunity to hone my crafts as a performer, singing, acting, playing instruments, writing, all these different things that I didn't have the opportunity to do before. Another thing that pretty much makes this a roller coaster are the drug therapy. There's a lot of drugs that you have to take. Prograph, of, of course, as you know, which is the drug that ensures that the transplant is functioning well. However, there's conjunctional drugs that you have to take. 
And on top of the conjunctional drugs, there's also drugs that have to make sure other organs, the kidney, are functioning well. So it's pretty much a, a science experiment of, oh, okay, we need to knock it down two more notches to increase this because too much of that prograph could affect the kidney. So we need to decrease the prograph and increase this other drug. So drug side effects are something that I actually still experience to this day. In fact, I just had a procedure a few days ago um, due to bacteria, esophagitis, in the throat, aka thrush. And that's pretty much a, a, a effect that happens when you have prograph and diflucan mixed together. So there's different things that happen with these immunosuppressants. Also, prograph, for me, I had the side effect of tremoring earlier on in my journey. So there's different things that you endure health-wise, but it's more so of trying to get a balance of the drugs that are in your system. My diet is a huge part of now. I ensure that everything I consume is made from myself, whole organic vegetables that are cooked, non-fibrous, anything that's rigorous on the intestine, I stay away from. So that's why I cook my vegetables and fruit. I also cook those lightly as well. Um, lean meats, I really don't eat much meat, but fish, maybe turkey, every blue moon. Also, another really important thing, I personally choose to not consume dairy. And the reason why I don't do that is because number one, dairy creates mucus and mucus is the door opener for disease. And because I have been healed and given a second chance, healed of a disease, Crohn's disease, which is actually what led to this entire journey, I choose not to consume dairy. So Knowing all of these things is muy importante. It's very important that you take it day by day and embrace where you are, process, 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 tomato, tomato. What I've learned about process, if you split it down the center, is what makes you a successful sex, cess, professional, pro. Cess and pro, a successful professional meaning that you're able to endure, you're able to conquer, and you're able to take things right on, straight on, like an athlete, having the mind of Christ. And so that's what I've learned during this journey is that it's very important to know that you can combat all things with consistency. Consistency is key. Discipline, something I'm still learning. And that's pretty much it for now with my transplant. It's such an amazing thing. I know it's odd to hear. I know it's rare, but we exist. <laughs> we exist and I'm very grateful. And, and gratitude is such a huge part of now. I live every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the evidence of elevation. So I know if, hey, today I can stretch. I'm grateful for that. If I know that today I can actually attempt to ride a bike, I leave feeling great. And of course, during this time of COVID, I'm extremely cautious to distancing, traveling, uh, definitely actually not traveling at all. And also I meant to mention prior to receiving transplant with short gut syndrome, traveling was a no-go just because of all the things that need to be done and TPN that had to be shipped, treatment, my nurse coming every every week, it was too much. So I'm kind of back there with traveling just for safety precautions. And also it's important to know that you are the answer, you're the key. So I'm so happy that this is in existence and I'm a living miracle to tell you that it works. You have to stay obedient to your body, listen to your body, listen to your doctors, and you will be elevated. Remember, 
Gratitude is the elevation. Thank you for your time.